Hello and welcome. My name is Mark. This is Riffle Shuffle and Roll. And today we're going to be talking about a little game called Royal Visit. If it's your first time visiting the channel, be sure to hit subscribe and the bell so you're notified about new games every week. Royal Visit is a tug of war style strategy game in which players are playing cards to move character tokens towards their castle. Along with this video, there is a write-up available over at GameRules.com. The link for that will be in the description. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's in the box. First is a very nicely laid out rule book that does explain the game very thoroughly. The game is played on a cloth game board that is divided into two main sections here. We have the green duchy and the red duchy. Within each duchy is the player's chateau or their castle. Ultimately, you're trying to get the king or the crown token into your chateau. Here at the bottom of the board, we have the starting space symbols for each character token. And up top here is the starting space for the crown token. The game also comes with these awesome, chunky little character tokens. We have two guards, the wizard, the jester, and the king. The king and the two guards is referred to as the court. We have a crown token that is uh, used for both keeping track of how long the game is going, but also it is part of one of the win conditions. And finally, we have the deck of playing cards for the game. So let's go ahead and dive into the different suits and what the different cards can do. All right, there are four suits of cards in this game. The first suit that we're gonna talk about is the wizard suit. Now what a card does is allow this particular piece to be moved on the board. So this card is a one, and that means that the wizard can be moved one space. A player can also move the wizard two spaces at a time or three spaces at a time. The next suit is the Jester. The Jester has a little more capability, so it can be moved one, two, three, four spaces at a time, or it can be moved directly to the middle space. As you will see, players can typically only play one card at a time. The King, when played with one card, allows the player to move the King one space. However, it has a special ability. When two king cards are played at once, both the king and the guards are able to be moved one space towards that player. And the final suit is the guard suit. Now the guard, you can play one card and choose one of the guards to move one space. Or you can play the one plus one card. That gives you a little more flexibility. You can move one guard two spaces, or you can move each guard one space. Now that you've seen all the components, let's go ahead and learn how to play the game. Place the board in the center between you and your opponent so that one player is sitting at each end of the board. This end will be one player's chateau, the green player, and this end will be the red player's chateau. Here are the starting spaces for the pieces. Each one has its own little symbol. The king is placed on the king space. Now typically you're gonna stand them up, but for this video, I'm gonna lay them flat. And then you place the two guards on the starting spaces for the guards. The jester and the wizard shares potential starting spaces. To determine which piece goes where, one of the players holds the pieces in their hands, shuffles them up, and then offers them to their opponent. Their opponent picks, and whichever piece they pick goes on their side of the board. The other piece goes on the other side. And that's gonna be used to determine who goes first. The player that has the wizard on their side of the board will go first. The crown token has both a large crown and a small. It begins with the large crown side up and it starts the game right here in the middle. 
it begins in the same position as the king. Shuffle the deck and deal eight cards to each player. The rest of the deck should be placed face down as a draw pile. You will need to leave space for a discard pile. Normally, you would keep your hand a secret, but for this video, we're gonna play with the hands shown. So the board is divided into two main sections, the green duchy and the red duchy. Within the duchies, each player has their own chateau. The chateau is represented here at the end of the board. The king starts directly in what is called the middle space, and the player that has the wizard in their duchy gets to go first. A player's turn consists of three phases. The first is the action phase. The player can choose to play a card or a series of cards from their hand, or they can use one of the special powers. So the player here on the right is player one, and they're gonna start their turn by playing a card from their hand. A player can typically only play one card from their hand at a time. So this player chooses to start with the wizard, the three wizard. So they play that card and that allows them to move the wizard towards them three spaces. One, two, three. Once a player chooses a suit to play, they can continue to play cards in the same suit. So player one could continue to play wizard cards if they want. You cannot play other cards. You must stay in the same suit. So here the player is gonna play uh, two in the wizard suit and move the wizard one, two more. When a player is done playing cards, they must move on to the next phase. Once a player is done with their action phase, they need to see if they can move the crown token. So for every character that is in their chateau, they move that crown token one space towards them. They do not have any characters in their chateau, so the crown token does not move. Also, if the king and both guards are in the player's duchy, the token moves one space towards them. So there is potential for that token to be moved quite a few spaces. The final phase is drawing. So once the player has finished their action, move the token if possible, they draw back up to eight cards. So they're gonna go ahead and draw two. That concludes their turn. Play passes over to player two. Now typically, a player can play one card at a time, but the king cards have a special ability that if you play two at the same time, you can move the king and both guards one space towards you. So player two is gonna do that. One, one, and one. The only real rules you must remember uh, as far as positioning goes is that the king must always be flanked by the guards. So the king needs to be between the two guards. It can never pass one or the other. Player two is also gonna go ahead and play one more king card, move the king towards them, and that completes their action phase. They do not have any characters in their chateau, so they cannot move the crown token. They also don't have that other guard in their duchy, so they are not able to move their crown token any spaces. Rather than play a card from the player's hand, they may also use one of two powers. The first is the wizard's power. So we're gonna rearrange the board a little bit here to make this happen. The wizard's power is the ability to move the king to the same spot as the wizard. Remember, that can only be done if the guard remains on the outside of the king. So here the king still lies between the two guards. This would be the player's move for the action phase. So once that move is completed, you would check how many characters are in the chateau. In this case, there is one character in the chateau. So the crown token moves one space in that direction. The other guard though is not in their duchy, so they can't move it for having the whole court in their duchy. They do not draw since they didn't play any cards. 
and that particular move would end their turn. The other power a player might use is the gesture's power. So let's go ahead and rearrange the board here. When the jester is between the player's chateau and the king, that player can use the jester suited cards as wild cards. Now, the same rules apply when you pick a suit and play the jester card, all other jester cards must be the same suit. So I would say, I wanna use this jester card as a guard and move this guard two spaces. And if I wanted, I could play this card as a guard card and move it two more spaces, getting a character in my chateau. I'd then move the crown token, draw back up to eight, and end my turn. As play continues, the draw pile might run out of cards. When this occurs, shuffle the discard pile and turn it face down to begin a new draw pile. After doing this, you need to flip the crown token over to the small crown side. That is a reminder that you have already shuffled the discard pile and began a second draw pile. This comes into play during the end game. There are three ways to win this game. First is to be the player that gets the king into their chateau. The first player to get the king into their chateau wins the game. The second way to win the game is to be the first player to get the crown token into their chateau. If that occurs, that player wins. If the draw pile runs out a second time, whichever player has the king in their duchy wins the game. If the draw pile runs out for a second time and the king is in the middle space, you shuffle it up and continue playing one more time and then the other conditions apply again. So if you have to go through the deck a third time, at the end of the deck, if the king is in the duchy, that player wins. And that's how to play Royal Visit. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of depth to this game. It's not like any other traditional card game that I've covered here on the channel. It is more of a board game that instead of rolling dice to move your pieces, you are playing cards. And I like how uh, card choice is really, really important. Lining up your moves, the, locking a player into choosing only one card suit per turn really makes you think ahead and try to decide how you're going to play your cards over the course of multiple turns. Of course, the best laid plans can easily be disrupted by the choices your opponent makes. So you're gonna have to figure out a way to set that board up for a win on a future turn and do it in such a way that whatever the opponent chooses to do doesn't mess with your plans too much. So there's a lot of game there, a lot of decisions to be made and it's easy to set up. It's easy to understand once you get going. It does offer a lot of choice. I like how there's special powers along with just playing the cards to move the tokens. You can really choose from quite a few different strategies about how you wanna go about winning. Are you gonna win by just aggressively getting that king to your chateau? If you do that and you only focus on the king, you might lose track of how many pieces are in your opponent's duchy. Because remember, every time uh, your opponent keeps a piece in their chateau or gets another piece in their chateau, that crown token moves towards them. So how are you gonna win? Are you going to get a direct win by having that king move to your chateau? Or are you gonna to try to win the long game by getting that crown token into your chateau and keeping the king out of your opponent's chateau? It, there's a lot to consider here, and I think that's really cool. For only being a few character tokens, a board, and then a deck of cards, I think this is about as deep as I'd wanna go with a game. 
So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, lots of links down in the description below to get to all my different uh, web pages such as Reddit and Board Game Geek and the traditional card game Discord, which is a pretty active little community. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep on playing.